Hi. In this video, I want to go over a few things that I've recently realized when it comes to getting the best speed out of a VDSL NBN connection. So, I pretty much by accident found out that the phone cable between the modem and the wall jack can have quite a significant impact on your overall speed. So, in a nutshell, more or less, in my specific case, I found that for every meter of cable, of this kind of phone cable, the flat cable with um, two or four wires in it that connects the modem to the wall, um, for every meter of that, I lost about five megabit per second in speed tests. So like not five megabit per second of sync speed, five megabit per second of actual real world usable speed. Now, I ended up spending quite a while um, going through and running uh, a bunch of tests. So what I've got here is a, um, I'm going to link in the vi in this video description um, to all of the documents that I ended up making. So I've got a, um, I've got an info document here that goes over uh, basically the information for like my copper connection. So you have some background on it and uh, I've got some photos of some of the tests I performed. Um, so there's some info in there about the tests, uh, then what I've done is I've made up a spreadsheet here with uh, basically my, my all my results. So I'll, I'll go over what these, um, what each of the columns mean, and um, I, I, I should probably start by saying I have um, screenshots that uh, give you the information that I used to generate this list. So in the modems uh, stats folder, um, I've got screenshots from my uh, modems um, DSL status pages. So uh, I would run a test, so shorter cable for instance, and then um, connect to the modem uh, with, I had an ethernet cable from my laptop to the modem, and then I was testing, say, the, the speed difference with the um, a shorter or a longer uh, phone cable. Uh, so here's the info that I was uh, using. So I've got that for 25 tests. The 25 tests I ran were over two different modems. Um, then I've got the speed test. So these are from speedtest.net. Uh, so for each one of those, I think give or take two, um, there's a accompanying speed test. So I'll go over the... Uh, the info here, but basically, um, what I uh, what I did here was I started. I've got the uh, these were all done over one day. I've got, I've got the times when I was working on this, so these are all AM in the morning. And I do understand because one of the biggest questions I seem to have got from people on Facebook were saying, "Well, isn't it just faster because as the night went on, there were less people connected." And, and no. Um, so one thing is, the main thing I've looked at with this is the sync speed. The speed tests from speedtest.net are interesting to look at, but my main goal with this was to see the sync speed. Now, I understand that at a peak time, say 7, 8 o'clock at night, when everyone's watching Netflix, the internet is slower. But the main reason it's slower is because there's not enough bandwidth to go around. So if you're with an ISP like, say, My Republic, who I was with, um, then they might have... I, don't, I honestly don't know the number, but let's say half. Say they've got uh, half the amount of bandwidth that they need for everyone to be happy. So if everyone was using the full capacity of their links, uh, everyone would be impacted by everyone else using the full capacity of their link. So everyone is then effectively sharing uh, a slower speed. So then that will impact a speed test. The sync speed, however, shouldn't, as far as I'm aware, shouldn't really have any, um, any change depending on the time of day or the, um, the amount of people on. And now, when I say that, in the back of my mind, I know a few things. So one of them is the coexistence period. So the plan with NBN was 
Uh, in the past, everyone had ADSL and they had a standard phone line with a dial tone. Now, these uh, older services can create noise on the phone line, which will slow down a sync speed. So if you're in an area that does uh, still have a coexistence period, where you've got possibly a neighbor who's still got an old phone with a dial tone, as opposed to a VoIP one connected to their modem, um, when they're, for instance, on a phone call, they may be impacting your sync speed. Now, in my area, we've had NBN for quite a while, uh, well over, well, it's been over two years now, and the coexistence period, from what NBN originally said, was going to be uh, 18 months. So I do believe the coexistence period is up. So in my area, I don't believe there are any uh, old services anymore. I believe the only services on the phone lines are VDSL services. Now, saying that, one, I don't know for sure, and two, the next thing I'm going to say is an assumption. I assume that VDSL uh, is smart enough that if the other noise in the pit or in the um, bundles of cable, like the 100 pair, if, if that noise is all VDSL noise, I am assuming that the node is smart enough that it can cancel it out because it's all coming from itself and that it won't impact sync speed. I am not 100% sure on this, but I can guarantee you that it has less of an impact than older PSTN services in the same bundle of cabling. So, that being said, if it were uh, an off-peak time when there was very little data going uh, down the cables, then I could see how potentially there could be a uh, better sync speed. However, all of the sync speed tests I've done here I did uh, quite a few out of order. So I didn't progressively say, get a shorter cable, shorter cable, shorter cable. Oh, look, the speed's getting better. I mean, that could have been seen as, well, it's getting later. Um, what I've done is shorter cable, shorter cable, shorter cable, a longer cable again. Yeah, the speed went back to as it was, shorter cable. So that kind of thing. So I've been doing that for most of the tests. So that's why I want to give you all the information so you can make up your own mind as to how much of an impact uh, the things I found will actually make. So... I'm going to go through this. So we've got the date, we've got the time. I've got a reference here. So A1 is the name of the photo, uh, sorry, the screenshot of the modem status page. And uh, B1 is the name of the screenshot of the speed test. I have two phone lines. So there's line one, which is the majority of the tests. I, I used the MyRepublic account. Um, then there's a line two. I did two tests using my Aussie broadband account, but I was originally doing them all with uh, My Republic because I could swap modems with My Republic, and after a reboot it was fine. Whereas with Aussie Broadband, if I put a different modem in, I had to either wait about half an hour or ring up and ask them to reset my port. So it was just easier to use the My Republic to do all this. So uh, the modems I used were a Technicolor modem supplied by My Republic, and there's the model number, and a Netcom wireless modem supplied by Aussie Broadband with this model number. Uh, the plan I used for the vast majority of my tests was the MyRepublic 100-40 non-gamer plan. So uh, there are two variations mainly on the plans that MyRepublic offer. There is a gamer plan and a non-gamer plan. So that's why I've written non-gamer there. And uh, there's an Aussie Broadband 100-40. So this should be 100-40, but clearly Excel just made that 41 and 42. But yeah, 40 plan unlimited from Aussie Broadband there. So um, I have this field of ADSL filters. Now, what happened was during my tests, which were initially all just based on cable length, um, I had a thought. I realized that I was um, included in a modems box that I got like ages ago. There was a VDSL splitter, which I knew was different to my ADSL splitters because it's the only one I've ever seen that said VDSL. So I figured... Would the VDSL splitter filter uh, have an impact? And initially, I'm like, well, it's going to have a negative impact, right? It's in the way. There's extra, you know, traces on the board that the signal has to travel through. Well, for some reason, and I still don't really know why, um, for some reason, using ADSL filters actually improved my speed, but only in 
some circumstances. So I'll get into that. Um, also, yes, I did just say ADSL filters. After I got the sh result that I didn't expect, I did some Googling and found out that ADSL splitter filters and VDSL splitter filters are basically the same. So, or if not exactly the same. So I, um, I had a bunch of ADSL filters, so I tried them out. And you'll see down here, I've got one where I've tried even 10. So I daisy chained 10 filters. And you're wondering what I mean by that. I mean, I did this. So I had the modem and then I had 10 of them plugged in one to the next, to the next, to the next, and then connected to the main phone line. So I will go over what my results were in a moment. Over here, I've got the uh, phone jack location. So there were two places I did uh, testing. One was the server rack, which are my only phone jacks in the house. So um, the house itself has got a four core um, direct burial cable that goes from the pit to the master bedroom. So this is the uh, phone cable here coming out of the wall in the master bedroom. Now what I did years ago, before NBM was even uh, around, I ran a Cat5e cable from this point and ran it up to the um, network rack. So I've just used gel connectors, like this kind of gel connector, um, to join the direct burial to the Cat5e that runs to my rack. So the only actual phone jacks in the entire house are these two, one for each line that are in the network rack in the kitchen. But between those phone jacks and the bedroom where the lead-in comes into the house, there's about 15 to 20 meters at my guess of Cat5e cable in the roof. So some of the tests, the initial tests, I performed using the phone jacks in the data, uh, the data points in the, uh, in the server rack. But when I realized how much the length of cable was impacting my speed, I decided to uh, run tests from the master bedroom. So what I did in that case was I got the lead-in cable that was originally um, joined to the, the Cat6, which you can probably make out the blue Cat6 there and the black leading cable there. And what I did was uh, specifically cut off the line I was using so it no longer went to the rack and then I just used gel connectors to connect a little phone cable so it's just plugged directly into the uh, lead-in cable so uh, with that too I did try uh, two different lengths so this is about I think 14 centimeters and then I made a one meter one as well which there we go so it's like a one meter one so to also to test the difference at this um, this close to the lead-in so back to the Excel file so they are the rooms, and then over here I have referenced uh, a black, a grey, and a white cable. And I specifically chose a black and a grey and a white cable because I figured it'd be easier to reference. They are this kind of cable, they're just different lengths. So uh, the grey cable was actually the cable that came with the Netcom modem. That's a 2 meter cable. The black cable was a little bit over 3 meters, and the white cable was 17 centimeters. It was just the small uh, kind of cable you get with the Telstra wall phone that's on the wall. Um, so that was giving me the best speeds because it was the smallest cable. Um, the next thing is I made a, I've tried to, for the majority of the tests, keep the uptime on the modem similar. And that was because uh, I wanted to give the modem well, I gave it about a minute. I wanted to give it enough time to get the sync and actually get a proper sync and be able to work. But I didn't want to give it too long in case that was impacting speeds as well. So most of these are around the one minute mark with the exception of ones I did specifically more or less to try uh, and see if there were a difference when it was on for six hours. So that's that. Now I've got the speed test results, which are these three columns here from speedtest.net. So there's the ping. Uh, sorry, these four columns. Uh, there's the ping that I was getting to the server. This is the server I was using. Now, for the most part, the server was an automatic uh, detect by um, speedtest.net. Um, however, I did find at some point, I think around here, the Activate Me uh, server did, for some reason, all of a sudden, all my speed tests to it got to only 50 meg. So I guess they got under a bit of load. So I just tried other servers like Optus and Telstra, and they were fine. Um, so that's why the servers are different. Uh, and then I've got two black spots here, where there were two that I just forgot to screenshot. Um, so what I've got here too is the um, 
the upload and download speed test from speedtest.net. Now, these are the main things I wanted to get out of this test. These are the sync. Um, it's pretty nice if I show you one of these photos. Um, so that is this information here. So the stuff that I was most interested in was the maximum line rate and the line rate. There's also the um, output power, the line attenuation, and the noise margin in, in those um, fields there. Now, I'm on. to be honest, I don't exactly understand completely what output power, line attenuation, and noise margin mean. My assumption is noise margin is the amount of noise on the line, but I really am not that sure. Line attenuation may be something similar. Again, not all that sure. And output power, yeah, no idea, to be completely honest. So if you know what these mean, please feel free to comment. I would be very interested to know what they mean. And, um, you know, if you know notice something from all these results. Because I've got that, even though I don't know what they mean, I deliberately put all of them in there in the hopes that someone would look at that and say, oh, yeah, this means that X basically. So all the data is there from the modems. Now I did do um, multiple modems, as I was saying before, the majority of them were the Technicolor modem. I was using the Netcom wireless modem for uh, the first few tests. Uh, for every test I did with the uh, My Republic, uh, with the Technicolor modem, I was using the Netcom one as well. But then I got to a point around 4am where I just couldn't be bothered anymore, for one. And for two, the results were pretty similar. So the modems they had their own characteristics where the Netcom one seemed to have um, a little bit better download, but a little bit poor upload. So, like, I know in general I'm going to choose the uh, Technicolor one, not the Netcom one anyway, because I prefer to have a better upload if that's an option. And uh, and it wasn't much difference anyway. And the other thing is my rack already has shelving that I've put in with uh, two of the, um, the My Republic Technicolor modems. So... Yeah, I just don't want to make shelf space for a modem that sits up like that. Basically, that's that's it. So I worked out after the first few tests that I was just going to keep using these ones. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's basically uh, it. So I'm going to put links down below. The, the links will be for this Google Drive folder. So again, there's the um, all the status pages which I got the info out and put into the spreadsheet. And there's all the speed tests, which I got the info out and put in the spreadsheet. So feel free to double check in case you think I've mistyped something or am making things up. Um, and then this one here is just some info I wrote that I thought might be, um, might help someone understand the results a bit better. Uh, so just a quick rundown, it's fiber to the node NBN. I'm around five to 600 meters of cable length from my, um, I guess the rack actually, because the, those are the tests. Uh, I remember the NBN installer doing a uh, speed test that said about 500 meg and he had plugged into the rack here. So it's probably about 500, oh, sorry, 500 meters. So it's probably about 500 meters from the data point in the kitchen. Um, but then again, I've, I've been told for, by other technicians that it's about 600 meters, so that's where I put five to 600. Um, the copper in the ground is 30 to 40 years old. I know the house was built in the 80s and it wasn't the first house here, so it'd be 30 to 40 years old. Um, the lead-in cable is just a two-pair, four-core cable. And uh, already already went over the Cat5e that runs to the rack. Uh, some of the tests were direct, so yeah, so in here, if I've got, so white was the white cable that was uh, from a, the back of a wall phone, uh, black and grey, different lengths, then there's direct, so there's the cable that was patched in directly to the lead-in that I had one metre long, and then there's a the cable that was patched directly to the lead-in that was about 12 centimetres long, so um, that's what that meant, and then, what else have I got here, the... Uh, phone, yeah, so the phone cables were just these standard um, standard phone cables, flat. I think the main problem with them, um, one, one thing I noticed was for every meter of this, I lost 5 megabit. But for the whole 15-odd meters of Cat 
5e in the roof. I also only lost about 5 megabit. So my assumption is that because the Cat5 is twisted, it's much more resilient to interference. So it's not, it doesn't have the problem of interference over a short distance. Now, with the length I'm running that cable, there is a drop that happens to be around about the same as a meter drop of this, but this cable is all flat. There is no twisting. So this is the main problem. Now my uh, eventual plan is one will either be to move the modems into the bedroom and then just use network links to go back to the PFSense router. Or potentially, if the lead-in cable comes in from the roof, I might um, put the, ca uh, the modems up in the roof and power them from the network rack um, so I can just unplug them if I need to reboot them. Or my other option would be just accept the speed I've got now and I would just make Cat5 um, to RJ11 cables. So I'm using a twisted cable that goes from the jack down to the modems. So, yeah, these cables are bad from my experience, but uh, if you were to make one using Cat5, uh, so the twisted cable, you would... I would assume that you would have a better experience and get a better sync. Um, yeah, so where were we? So that's phone cables. Um, the filters, yeah, so the AD cell filters, I really have no idea how... Okay, I have a little idea, I think, how they're working, but I don't have any solid evidence on how they are working. So, these are... So, I had a test here with 10, and 10 was too many. Um, I was... The speed was going good as I added one after the other, up to about the mark of 5. After 5, it diminished. So, 5 was like the sweet spot for me. The interesting thing was using these filters, um, which shouldn't have worked at all. They should have made things worse. But using these filters not only made the signal better here and was consistently better here. So I could do a, a speed test or even um, look at the sync speed and then disconnect these, plug the modem directly in to here, like just straight into the lead-in. My speed would be lower. I could then you know, restart the modem, it would be lower. Restart the modem, it would be lower. Now restart the modem, but put these back in line, it would be faster. Like, these were consistently giving me that result. I don't really know why. And the thing that got me the most, the thing that I found the most interesting, was they only did it when they were in the bedroom. If they were at the other end of that Cat5 cable, if they were at the rack, they actually were so slim margin that it's probably an error, or the same, or worse. So, if I, I wouldn't put them in the rack, but for some reason, at the lead-in, they helped. So I really don't know how that's happened. But I pulled one apart, and uh, here's the bottom and the top of the circuit board. So the best I can come up with in general with this is uh, this here is the DSL port up the top. These two pins diagonally are the two center pins that are used for the DSL line, and these two pins are the line in from the wall. Now, after tracing these out and having a look, it is just directly from there to there. So this isn't doing anything. However, it does appear that there are two capacitors on the line. So there's from this point here to this point here, there's a capacitor on the other side. And then it goes through this one, through through this surface mount capacitor. So this here, from this pin back, makes its way to one of the pins. And from this pin back, it makes its way to one of the pins. So it's two capacitors and maybe some other stuff, because I, I couldn't be bothered tracing all this down, but it's at least two capacitors on the line. So I'm wondering if it's just capacitors. If you understand how this is giving me the effect it's giving me, can you please comment below, because I'd be very interested in that. And more specifically, if you could give me an idea on a circuit I could build that would get rid of all the other junk and maybe just be a capacitor of the correct value that I could just put across the phone line. Um, so if, you, if anyone's got info on that, uh, I'd be very interested to run some more tests relating to that and why the splitters were helping. And more so, why they were helping in one area. If I moved them further away, they didn't help. Um, but anyway, that's that document. So please, give the document a read. Um, have a really good look through the spreadsheet. And please comment. I'm very interested to know what you guys think. Um, you know, I'm interested to know if you guys have done tests like this in the past and if you have, what results you've got. And I'm very interested to know about the things that I, I don't 
have a hundred percent knowledge on, like the um, line attenuation thing or how the uh, splitters are helping. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. While you're uh, here, please have a, a look through this. Please do comment, and uh, you know, feel free to watch my other videos.